Okay, let's dive in. Picture this. A discovery that just, well, shakes up everything we thought we knew about human history. A real game changer. Exactly. And that's kind of what we're looking at with this find in the Sahara Desert. We're talking 7,000-year-old mummies. Mm -hmm. But here's the kicker. Yeah. Their DNA. It doesn't line up with ours, with modern humans. And what's really fascinating um, is the setting. The Sahara, you know, we think endless sand, right? Right, Tetris. But 7,000 years back, it was green, lush even. Scientists call it the Neolithic subpluvial or the African humid period. Basically, much wetter. So a completely different world back then. Totally. And these mummies, they give us this incredible snapshot of life right during that huge environmental shift and maybe uh, life forms we didn't even know could be there. Yeah, exactly. We're working from an article by Elizabeth Rain that details this, this really amazing find. Mm. And for everyone listening, our mission today, our deep dive, is really to unpack what this actually means. Yeah, what are the implications? We'll look at the dig site, the archaeology, then you get into the genetics, which is, yeah. well, pretty mind-blowing and sort of piece together what it suggests about life in the ancient Sahara, and maybe even about us. Which makes you wonder though, how do you even find something like this? I mean, the Sahara is vast, remote. That's a great question. The article says the spot was super isolated uh, near the modern border of Libya and Chad. Okay. And get this, it was satellite imagery that first flagged the area. Ah, technology. Yeah, revealed some uh, unusual geological formations, enough to make archeologists think, hmm, Maybe we should check this out. That really shows how far archaeology has come, doesn't it? Using satellites to pinpoint potential sites in places you just couldn't easily survey on foot. No kidding. And the team that eventually went in, it was a joint effort. You had folks from Cambridge, the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, and uh, the Libyan Department of Antiquities. A serious collaboration. Led by a Dr. Amina Hassan. And the article notes their initial goal wasn't even looking for mummies specifically. They were searching for signs of early human settlements from when the region was, you know, greener and more livable. Okay, so the mummies were kind of an unexpected bonus. A huge one, obviously. Seems like it. And what they actually found, 14 individuals, men, women, children. Wow, a group. Yeah, and naturally mummified, just preserved by the incredibly dry conditions in these sort of shallow burial pits. Natural preservation like that can be remarkable. It was. They found them wrapped in animal hides. Some had simple jewelry, bone and shell stuff. Hmm. The hides and jewelry, that tells you something about their culture, their practices. Right. And alongside them. Other clues. Stone tools, bits of pottery, evidence of hearths, campfires, basically, and animal bones. Okay, so that really paints a picture. Not just burials, but a place where people lived. A small settlement, maybe? That's what it suggests. And the dating is key here. Roughly 7,000 years old. 7,000. Okay. Which, as the article points out, puts them right near the end of that African humid period. That whole green Sahara phase was from about uh, 14,500 to 5,000 years ago. So they were living there as the environment was changing, starting to dry out. Exactly. The Sahara was in transition. Still likely more savanna-like than pure desert, but definitely heading towards the arid conditions we see today. That timing is really interesting. Living through climate change, essentially, must have put a lot of pressure on them. You'd think so. And then... Then there are the bodies themselves, the physical traits. This is where it gets, well, even weirder. How so? The researchers knew right away something was off. These didn't look like typical homo sapiens. And what was different? Okay, so elongated skulls, like noticeably longer. Mm -hmm. Unusual. Really large eye sockets, too. And a brow ridge that was uh, quite pronounced. Those are pretty significant skeletal differences, not just minor variations. Not at all. And there was more. Weird wear patterns on their teeth, which might mean a different diet. Okay. Long, slender limbs. But maybe the craziest part. Yeah. An extra joint in their fingers. An extra joint. Yeah. The article stresses that's a feature we just don't see in modern humans. Or in any other known hominid, for that matter. Okay, wow. An extra finger joint. That's, yeah. that's not just variation. That's fundamentally different biology. It could mean they use their hands differently, maybe? It could be. It really points to a separate evolutionary path, doesn't it? It certainly suggests something far outside the range of known human anatomy. There's a quote in the article from Dr. Hassan, the lead researcher. She says something like, We knew he had something extraordinary. The skeletal features were unlike anything we'd seen. It was clear these weren't typical Homo sapiens. But they needed proof. Exactly. But we needed genetic evidence to confirm our suspicions. Which, of course, leads us to the DNA. Right, the genetic analysis. That must have been eagerly awaited. You bet. 
And this is where the story takes another huge leap. So ancient DNA, it's tricky to get, right? Especially from old remains in harsh places. Extremely tricky. But the article mentions that, weirdly enough, the super dry Saharan conditions actually help preserve the genetic material better than you might expect. Ah, a bit of luck then, preservation-wise. Seems so. The heavy lifting on the genetics was done at the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, Germany. Dr. Johannes Krauss's team. Okay, yeah, they're world leaders in ancient DNA. If anyone could get results, it's them. And the results they got. Well, the article calls them astonishing. Don't leave us hanging. Right, sorry. The <sighs> DNA from these mummies, it didn't match any known human group. Any? Like, none at all? None. They compared it to modern humans from all over, to Neanderthals, to Denisovans, even older ones like Homo heidelbergensis. And nothing. No overlap. Zero overlap, which is... Oh, it's hard to overstate how significant that is. We generally know how different human groups and our extinct relatives connect genetically, finding a population this recent with no connection. It's like finding a whole new branch on the family tree that we didn't even know existed. Pretty much. Dr. Krauss is quoted saying exactly that, something like, these individuals belong to a lineage that diverged long before Homo sapiens emerged. Diverged when? Get this possibly as far back as 600,000 years ago. 600? Wow, that's that's deep time, way back in the middle Pleistocene. An incredibly long time for a separate lineage to exist, apparently side by side or at least continent by continent with our own ancestors. So the major implication here, the article suggests these could be, what, a totally different hominid species? Or maybe a subspecies? It's the jaw-dropping possibility, yeah. Oh. A previously unknown group of hominids surviving in the Sahara, evolving in parallel to Homo sapiens until, you know, just 7,000 years ago. And apparently, without interbreeding with Homo sapiens, if their DNA is totally distinct. Right. It really challenges that sort of linear picture of evolution we sometimes get, where branches just lead to us or die off neatly. This suggests maybe it was messier. Mm. More diverse. Absolutely. A whole other hominid lineage persisting in Africa, in the Sahara specifically, that we had absolutely no inkling about until now. And the genetic analysis turned up other interesting bits too, didn't it? It did. They found signs of inbreeding. Okay. What does that usually suggest? Well, it typically points to a small population size, where individuals didn't have many options for mates outside their immediate group. Isolation, basically. Makes sense if they were a distinct group living in a specific region. Exactly. And consistent with that, they also saw a high degree of what's called mitochondrial DNA genetic drift. Okay, break that down a bit. Think of it like uh, random fluctuations in gene frequencies just due to chance in a small population. Over generations in isolation, their mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down the maternal line, just drifted and became quite distinct. It reinforces the idea of a small, isolated group evolving on its own track. Got it. Isolation leading to unique genetic patterns. Right. And one more thing the genes showed. Yeah. Adaptations for living in a hot, dry place. Specific genes linked to things like efficient water retention and heat resistance. Which fits perfectly with living in the Sahara, even the greener version. It wasn't exactly cool and damp. No, it's a really neat example of natural selection captured in their DNA. Their biology was clearly being shaped by that Saharan environment, even as it was changing around them. Okay, so let's try and pull this all together for everyone listening. You've got these 7,000-year-old mummies found in the Sahara, which wasn't desert back then, but was getting drier. Mm -hmm. They look physically different from us, elongated skulls, extra finger joints, stuff like that. Really distinct features. And crucially... Their DNA doesn't match any known human group, ancient or modern. Mm -hmm. It suggests they split off from our lineage maybe 600,000 years ago. An entirely separate branch of the hominid family surviving relatively recently. It really forces us to rethink, well, a lot about human evolution, about mm -hmm. who lived in Africa, about the history of the Sahara itself. Yeah, the key takeaway, the real aha moment here, is that human history might be way more complex, way more diverse than we imagined. Like there are other kinds of humans or human-like beings mm -hmm. sharing the planet with our ancestors much more recently than we thought. Exactly. And the Sahara, this place we often see as just empty space, could have been this crucible for a whole different evolutionary story. A lost branch of our family tree hiding in plain sight in a sense. It just blows your mind a bit, doesn't it? And it makes you wonder, seriously, what else is out there? Buried under sand or ice or hidden in jungles? Mm. What other chapters of our own story or the story of life 
are we missing? How many other discoveries like this are waiting to completely reshape how we see our origins? It's a powerful reminder, isn't it? That the past isn't necessarily a closed book. There are still these profound mysteries, these potential revolutions in understanding, just waiting. Definitely makes you want to keep an eye on ancient DNA research and, you know, what else might emerge from the sands. Absolutely. It's an incredibly exciting time for uncovering these ancient secrets.